And the essence was, Bob, I've followed you for years. I've got a lot of respect for you, and I want to share this with you. And an intelligent professional of 40 years' experience in the military and in the government said, China is going to invade Taiwan starting... Bob Moriarty, how are you? I'm doing very good. Good. You're looking good. <laughs> oh. Andy, I'm always looking good. You don't need to bring that <laughs> right? So um, crazy stuff is going on. I want to first talk. Well, let's talk about first what just happened um, mm -hmm. over the weekend. And then I want to talk about just all the geopolitical tensions that are being really amped up here. What's your take on that? Uh, I think that Donald Trump is going to set some kind of record for the most attempted assassinations. Uh, he's up to two now. And uh, no question, there, there will be more. Uh, the Democrats have literally uh, painted a bullseye on its butt and any anybody shoots Donald Trump, it's a free ride, and and a a thirty day ticket for the entire family to Disney World. Yeah, right. Um, that story broke, and I just I was in disbelief because I didn't think they'd have the courage to um to do it again, or just it would be so obvious. I don't want to say courage; it would just be so obvious. Like, why would they do this again? Then again, it happened well, again. Because they missed the first time. You know, when yeah. you miss a target, I mean, you don't go home. You, you put another round in it and fire another shot and hope you don't miss this time. Now, I, I'm going to point something out to you. And of course, the readers or the listeners always hate when I ask questions. How was the sense? How was the shot termed? By the media. How was the shot termed this over the weekend? Yeah. When did they call it the news story? When did they call it a news story? What did they call it? Um, I guess they didn't call it an assassination attempt. No, exactly. That's my point. Okay. They call it a suspected potential. Assassination had been, I think, wait a bit. You got a guy with an AK 47 at a golf course with Trump, and what? <laughs> what, what when it, <laughs> did he replace his nine iron with an AK 47? Is there some new way of shooting golf balls that I wasn't aware of? Uh, and it's funny because it's scary. And it's like reading Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. You just wonder, God, I wonder when they're going to run out of corruption. And the answer is, I don't know. It's, it's a big bucket. They got a lot more of it. Uh, somebody sent me something interesting. And they, the Secret Service said, we did not secure the golf course when Trump was playing because we don't do that except for sitting presidents. And then he showed how much Secret Service tension uh, Obama gets when he plays golf. And they, they inspect every car near the golf course. So the, the DOJ, the FBI, the CIA, and the Democrats are saying, you, you want to take a shot at Trump? It's okay with us. I, I'm going, could they possibly make the corruption any more obvious? And of course, there's a very simple reason for it. Okay. Now, I, I'm not one of those people who worships Donald Trump. I think he was a large-ass uh, opera singer. Did you know that? Did you know he was a first singer? I had no idea. No. Yeah. You should <laughs> listen to him. If you listen to him, you know he's an opera singer because he goes, me, 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 me. Uh, so I've done a trick. Okay. But uh, 
what they've done between that, that, that fake trial in New York and the fake trial in Georgia and, and the uh, attempt assassination, he came within half an inch of having his brains blown out a couple of months ago. And now there's some other clown that, that hates Trump that's on a golf course. How did he know Trump was there? That was public information. So uh, we've got an interesting situation. We have the most corrupt CIA and the most corrupt FBI in history. And they are terrified of Donald Trump taking office because all these 51 people who signed the document saying the Hunter Biden laptop had, had all hallmarks of, of, of false flag Russian disinformation, they knew it was, it was real. The FBI knew way in advance it was real. The whole Russia Gate story. And while it was very interesting, because uh, do you remember the specifics of, of Russia Gate? Um, sort of. I mean, I know that everybody, if you're getting alluding to everybody, signed off that he had some kind of collusion with Russia to throw the election and and blah 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 blah, which was never founded. Um, it was planned. No, no. To- they it, they went into specifics, okay? Okay, and, sure. And they, and that Trump went to Moscow, right? And hired, hired hookers, and yeah. it's not in, in the bed in, yeah. in in Russia. To hire hookers, evidently it's like, it's illegal to pay hookers in the United States, but not in Russia. And and uh, he was paying the hookers. Either either they were peeing on him, or he was peeing on them. And I thought, you know. That's something I've always wanted to try. I just, I wonder what that would be like. Yeah, right. Right? Oh, wait. Yeah, you can't make this stuff up. But no, no somebody can. Okay, you somebody did. Yeah, you're made right. it up. You've got these 51 intelligence professionals saying, oh, yeah, that, well, that looks like Russian disinformation. I was going, guys, I, I mean, when somebody's pulling your leg, don't you ever get it? Right, right. Yeah, that's the thing is they can make it up. I say that. But yeah, it's shocking. It's just absolutely shocking to me. And I mean that I had Simon Hunt on and he shares your point of view. He said it'll be an act of God if Donald Trump is the next president. Not that he won't. There is a zero chance zero i said six months ago that joe biden would not be the candidate president period and the only reason joe biden's sticking around is he's negotiated a plea deal for his entire crime family uh before he leaves office i mean if you want to see total absolute right in your face corruption when that entire family gets full dispensation of President Harris, uh, you're you're gonna know you've been had. Yep. Yep. So um I guess it seems like all these things are coming to coming together, if you would. And I wanted to know or I wanted really specifically to chat to you about the geopolitics. Um I am in shock, and I really say this with, I shared this with, yeah, it was just last week, it was Tom, um, it was, I'm just in shock we're not in World War III right now. Um, you have everything ratcheting up with NATO and Russia in that war, and now what, we, what you don't hear about is the whole China aggression, or I don't want to say aggression because I really don't know what it is, but the whole thing in with China and Taiwan. What what's your point of view and about where we are in the geo geopolitics of everything? Well, and Andy, I've I've got to be totally candid with you. Please. I hate when you whine. Okay. <laughs> wine War Three is scheduled for this weekend. Okay. Tell me about it. A month ago, somebody sent me an email, and the essence was, Bob, I followed you for years. I've got a lot of respect for you, and I want to share this with you. 
and an intelligent professional of 40 years experience in the military and in the government said China is going to invade Taiwan starting on the 20th of September and it'll go whole hog by the 22nd. When I was in Vietnam, I, I flew over 800 missions, and I was also a trained intelligence officer as well as a pilot. And I have read 500 to 1,000 intelligence reports. So I've got a pretty good idea of the caliber of the person doing the reporting. Uh, it's not a casual thing. It was my job, and literally uh, my life depended on the ability to separate the wheat from the chaff. Uh, what the guy said, and it was a long email, was very, very credible. Well, I got back to him and I said, well, there's something, there's two things that you're actually missing. One is Donald Trump was scheduled to be sentenced in New York in that fraud case. And it's not Donald Trump's fraud. It's actually the judge's fraud. That case is the worst legal case in American history. It was a total fraud. If that judge is not disbarred, there is no law legal system in the United States. It was total absolute bullshit. The basis of the, the case was accusing Donald Trump of paying off a hooker. And, and frankly, you know, when paying off a hooker becomes illegal, Andy, we're all in trouble, okay? Right. But thank goodness, even in New York City, paying off hookers is not illegal. But it was total fraud. It was total fraud from the get-go. It should have never been brought. It was a joke. It was just as big a joke as that case in Georgia where you have the prosecutor hiring her boyfriend and paying him a couple of million bucks, okay, supposedly for, for handling this case, and then lying through her teeth, and he lied through his teeth about when the relationship started. And the most interesting thing about that case was the judge's orders saying, one of you two has to go. But what everybody may have missed, he also said in the same order, by the way, I'm forwarding this to the State Bar Association because it's something that certainly looks at, uh, the State Bar would certainly be interested in looking into. What he was doing was saying, these two idiots are lying through their teeth under an oath and, you know, deliberately and insulting the intelligence of everybody that listened to him. So there is an excellent chance. I, I give it a 30 to 75 percent that the Chinese will attack Taiwan this weekend. Okay. And why I say that? The way the Chinese and the Russians conduct warfare is they give you a lot of rope and they're going to give you a lot of rope until you hang yourself. Uh, NATO and the United States have crossed red line after red line after red line after red line. Everybody say, well, the Russians are a bunch of pussies, okay? Because they're putting up with this bullshit, okay? When any real man would react. But what they don't understand is when the Russians or the Chinese or the Iranians attack, it is going to be suddenly, it's going to be a total surprise, and it's going to be overwhelming. Now, let's talk about geopolitical flashpoints. Obviously, Ukraine is one. NATO and the United States are desperately trying to start World War III there. I, I, I had to laugh. I read something from Justin Castro. Okay, I don't know why people call him Trudeau. He's not a Trudeau. He's Castro. <laughs> Justin <so> Castro <laughs> was talking about he fully approved of the Ukraine firing law I read, I read into that. Russia. Now, uh, I'm going to ask you kind of a trick question. What exactly is wrong with, with Justin saying that? What is the fatal flaw? 
to Canada's prime minister saying Ukraine should attack Russia. So it's a trick question, but I, on that, I'm like, I'm, why would you say anything? I mean, you have, why would you even do that? Well, here's the deal. They have Girl Scout troops in Canada that are better armed and bigger than the Canadian armed forces in total. Okay. Here's the guy whose idea of combat is running around on a pogo stick who knows nothing about combat saying, oh, I got a great idea. We've only left a million Ukrainian kids get killed fighting somebody they couldn't possibly beat. Okay. So when Putin says, if you attack us with those weapons and we know it's going to be NATO troops controlling them and we know it's NATO uh, satellites controlling them and NATO aviation controlling them, we are going to attack the people who attack us. And, and of course, Castro or Castro doesn't care because he says, you know, Canada is a long way away from Russia. But Paris isn't. London isn't. Brussels isn't. Okay. Yeah. Washington, D.C. isn't. It, it was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I have no idea of who he was sucking up to, but Advocating war crimes is a war crime. The Ukrainian war should have never taken place in the first place. It was the United States and NATO behind it from the get-go. 30 years ago, the United States said, we are not going to expand NATO one inch to the east. And it's actually in writing. (laughs) And that was 15 countries ago. And that in 2014, the United States spent $5 billion under the direction of Victoria Newland to overthrow the legally elected government of Ukraine and putting in their own thugs. And they got caught at, at, at the tape recording of the phone call was played by Russia, which was really funny. Because Victoria <laughs> Noodle was talking about the EU's reaction to them putting their thug in. Well, fuck the EU. And I'm thinking, God, we finally have a politician who tells the real truth. Fuck the EU. Thank you, Victoria. So the thugs in, in Kiev started attacking the breakaway provinces and killed 14,000 people. Mm-hmm. And no question whatsoever, the Russians sent their own troops in, okay, in civilian clothes, and they fought back. So the two breakaway projects who voted overwhelmingly to not be part of the illegal government of Ukraine, uh, there were absolutely Russian troops fighting with them, too. Kiev was losing, so France, the U.K., and the United States made an agreement called Minsk II. Mm-hmm. in 2016 and agreed that there would be a legal election and the breakaway provinces could determine for themselves, okay, who they wanted to be part of and they would stop shelling Donbass. And, and of course, they lied. And, yeah. and the UK and Germany and, and France have turned around and said, oh, we're, we're lying through our teeth. We didn't actually mean to, to have a peace agreement. We, we were just giving Ukraine time to rearm. And we were going to train them the NATO way so they could kick Russia's booty. At the end of the day, how is it nobody ever said, what's at stake here? Why exactly do we care who's running Ukraine? Or who controls it? What What is our vested interest? How are we better off? Why would we spend $220 billion on the most corrupt country in Europe? Let me, let me think about that. That's, that's kind of a trick question, Bob. Mm-hmm. I don't know. 
seem pretty dumb to me. So we have one flashpoint in Ukraine. Putin has made it absolutely crystal clear. Go ahead. You fire one rocket, one missile in the center of Russia, and I got a surprise for you. And he's serious heart attack. And yeah. I can guarantee there are generals with cattle prods in their hands saying, uh, Putin, you know, we need to talk about this. We got a flashpoint in Gaza, okay? And, and the beauty of the, the conflict between Israel and Gaza is it gives everyone the opportunity to show if they actually have a working moral compass. If you do not recognize that the cold-blooded murder of 200,000 people is a war crime, your moral compass is broken. It is genocide. It is illegal. The ICC has called it illegal. The ICC has demanded, actually, you don't see it in the Western press, that, that Israel actually move all their illegal immigrants out of the West Bank, okay, which is not theirs. And, and uh, of course, the Western media lies about everything. So Americans and Europeans don't know anything about it. The ICC came out a week ago and said the occupation of the West Bank is, is illegal and, and Israel needs to pull back. Israel has turned Zionism into a murderous cult. And they would very much like to confuse Judaism with Zionism, and the two are not the same. Zionism, it's no more Judaism than it is Christianity. Actually, Christian Zionists, there's a lot more of them, and the Christian Zionists are 70 years older than, than the Jewish Zionists. Christian Zionists was founded about 1830, and it was about 1890, 1900, before Jewish Zionism was founded. What is going on in Israel is criminals, and anyone who actually has any moral fiber should be speaking up and speaking out. And there are a lot of Jewish people who are coming out, and they are the ones protesting, and they are the ones saying, we need a ceasefire, we need a ceasefire now. And we do not support this war. Meanwhile, the Houthis, okay, and, and from a military perspective, I have to give these guys all the credit in the world. The Houthis have brought Israel's economy to a standstill. They just fired a missile, a 20-year-old missile, into Israel. And none of the so-called defenses, including two U.S. destroyers, could stop it from hitting its target. So you've got Ukraine, you've got Gaza, you've got Lebanon. Uh, Hezbollah has something like 150,000 missiles and, and rockets, and they could destroy Israel in one day. And Netanyahu, who is fighting desperately to stay in office, because once he gets booted out of office, he's going to face criminal charges. So he would rather destroy Israel than face criminal charges. There's a lot of people in Israel who recognize this war has nothing to do with Muslims, has nothing to do with Christians, has nothing to do with Zionists. It has everything to do with keeping Bibi Netanyahu out of prison. So you've got Ukraine, you've got Lebanon, you've got Gaza, you've got the Houthis. And meanwhile, it's very quiet on the Western Front, okay, the Western Pacific Front, but there were war games in progress. Actually, let me think, there were war games still in progress right now that no Americans know about because the American press isn't going to say it. If you were going to mount a massive sudden attack, sudden attack on your enemy, you would use war games as a method of getting all of your combatants into place. So I, I'm not going to say there's a 100% chance of World War III starting this weekend, 
but there's a 30 to 75 percent chance that the intelligence report that I read is perfectly valid. And where it really got interesting, I wrote back and I said, you know, we've talked about this judge and the sentencing, which, of course, has been delayed now. But you didn't even mention a word about Iran or Russia, and they certainly would play a part. And he came back to me and said, you know, I'm under NDAs and I can't even say the word. OK, I, I cannot discuss that what's even open source information. but. Should China invade Taiwan and should the United States get involved, you can guarantee Russia will, you can guarantee Iran will, you can guarantee the Houthis will, you can guarantee Hezbollah will. And according to Jim Rogers, who is part of the deep state, who has participated in a lot of war games. Every war game of NATO versus Russia ended up nuclear. I need a moment. So my head is racing with so many questions. Um, it's kind of like, you know, it's like you're tying it all together almost. Um, I hope you're wrong, number one. And I mean that with the highest amount of respect. You know, me too. You me too. Wrong. Okay. And to the extent that I want to make it crystal clear, this is not my assessment. This is my assessment of a 40-year intelligence professional and what I read reads true. And, and I, I would hate to see it. We are closer to nuclear war. And certainly Israel wants a nuclear war. Certainly NATO wants a nuclear war. Certainly the Democrats want a nuclear war. Certainly the neocons want a nuclear war. And there's very few people. And the bizarre thing is the only people talking peace or Iran, China, and Russia. Yeah. That's crazy That's, to me. Yeah. Um, so I, I want to be clear to, to just the audience, and this is going to get, if YouTube doesn't blacklist, this, this will get 20,000 views, 30,000 views. Um, I mean, I'm making some leaps here, I guess, and I'm just trying to understand the chessboard, for lack of a better word, the global chessboard. Can I, can I give you a simple question to ask? Please. Is there any possible way that what the United States, NATO, and Israel are doing can end in anything but a nuclear war? And if you ask that question, it should be obvious we're going to go to war. And, uh, of course, the real question is, who's going to win? And the answer is, I don't know, but we ain't going to win. So, yeah, no, you're right. But the thing is, it's like, um, I guess going back about three steps, and you just really outlined it really well, um, it's like we keep on, and when I say we, it's NATO and the U.S., which is NATO, um, keeps on poking the bear. And it's like, we want to. And for the life yeah. of me, why? And then it's money. It just has you know, to be I, money. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a really good question. Why? And the answer is it's end of empire. And if you've ever seen a scorpion die, the very last thing it does is try to try to jump around in every direction and and score hits on anything around it. Yeah. It's the end of empire. The oligarchs understand it's end of empire. They got caught in in the bio warfare scheme, which is still ongoing. I mean, it's absolutely amazing to me that anybody gives these idiots any credibility. 
But this is an overall conflict between the debt-based system of the West and a resource-based system of the East. And quite bluntly, there is absolutely no question as to who's going to actually win this thing. And it is not the debt-based system of the West. So it's kind of about money. The United States isn't going to make any money. They just hope they've got a really good excuse for defaulting on $36 trillion worth of debt that they have no ability to ever pay. Yeah. You know, you're right. It's not about so much about money. It's about hanging on to power. It's about power. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. what it is. Now, work it out a little more with me with China. Um, does any of your intels say, like, I mean, are we moving? I guess the, you, you mentioned war games, but are we moving ships over there? Um, are they moving ships over? What's the hot activity? Yeah, of course. They're moving an aircraft carrier over and they've moved submarines over. But here, here's what's funny. From a military perspective, and I'm a guy who spent 20 months in heavy combat, you know, what could we do to defeat China? Nothing. We couldn't. Let's talk about it from a legal point of view. Is Taiwan part of China? From a legal point of view? Yeah. Like for a U.S. point of view or an international law yeah. point of view? The U.S. point of view, they are, right? Of course they are. I mean, the absolutely amazing thing is we're acting like this is some kind of remote province in East Bumpfuck. Okay, and it's not. It's Taiwan, and we've always agreed that Taiwan is part of China. Right now, I highly suggest that if China intends to do something, they will be talking right now to the guys running Taiwan, saying, hey, look, I mean, Hong Kong accepted their fate. You need to accept your fate or you can lose. But there are so many catastrophic things that could happen if. China invades Taiwan, the price of computers and chips and everything doubles, triples, quadruples, literally overnight. And should Iran get involved, okay, the price of oil goes 300 bucks overnight. We are talking about total, absolute, utter catastrophe for the world economy and potentially a billion or two billion dead people. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, th I thought of the human cost, the humanity of it. That's number one. But number two is just the play on natural resources. And then, but then it's like, and I really think that's what it is too. It's a play on natural resources. Who's going to control the resources, right? I don't think they're that smart. I think these are stupid people. Uh, the problem with Washington is two things. One is they talk to each other, and the other is they listen to each other. Right. All right. So um, we'll say, how do we game this out? Let's assume, and game is the wrong word when we're talking something this catastrophic. Um, but let's game it out. That happens. What happens domestically in the U.S. here? I mean, nobody wants this war. I mean, we're going to talking about potential civil war here. <laughs> uh, strange enough, and that's a really good question right there. Uh, there are things going on. If Americans realize the level of corruption in the DOJ and the legal system and the FBI, there would be a revolution in the United States. And the whole woke bullshit, okay, with white guys being the enemy, and uh, you you can become a world class female singer by or uh, swimmer by growing long hair and wearing a woman's bathing suit. If these guys actually want to be women, if 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 it's absolutely ingrained in them, I I was born in the wrong body. And, and I, I really want to be a woman. I don't want to see them wearing dresses. I don't want to see them with long hair. I want them 
cutting their dick and balls off. Okay. I don't know any women with dicks and balls, but uh, these guys want to pretend they're women, but they haven't done the one thing. Do you know what the difference is between being involved and being committed? Tell me. Okay, the chicken, she's involved. The pig, he's committed. Right. I don't know what to, um, I mean, certainly, well, with what you just said, it certainly is a cultural, complete implosion of culture. <laughs> I mean, of everything, but I don't know. It's like, I find myself thinking and reading about this and listening, doing a lot of listening and talking to people like yourself. It's like, I don't know what to do. Um. I mean, there's so many if-then implications. Somebody asked me today, what's going to happen, you know, if, if, if this war takes place? You know, what happens afterwards? And I said, I don't know. Nobody knows. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're, uh, if you remember the, the seafaring charts from the 15th, 16th century, and when they were showing the, the center of the Atlantic Ocean, they said, beware, uh, dragons here lie. We don't know what's out there, okay? We don't know what's going to happen. I know the people running NATO, the people who are in the DOD, uh, the Pentagon, these people are idiots, okay? Yeah. They have all these crap equipment. Okay, that couldn't get out of its own way. I was a combat fighter pilot in the hottest fighter in the world at the time, which was the F-4B. And I look at that $2 trillion, $2 trillion piece of crap cost the, called the F-35. I go, what kind of idiot actually came up with that idea? It's end of empire, okay? Uh, the United States had an 80-year run and it was end of empire. Nobody wants to give up that power. And they're all running around talking to each other, saying, ain't we wonderful? Ain't we wonderful? If I could make myself handsome by saying I'm handsome, I would say it, okay? But I ain't, and saying it doesn't mean shit, okay? The Pentagon is filled and run by a bunch of losers, and somebody sent me a picture of a four-star, I, I was really shocked, a four-star female uh, general, and she had 21 medals. And next to her was a picture of Dwight D. Eisenhower, and he had six medals. They are giving medals out in the military now for... Yeah attendance okay right. when i went into the marine corps you didn't, you didn't it's 1960 uh, let's see 1964 you didn't get a medal for showing up for duty but while i i went through boot camp they came out with the national defense service medal we called it the i was alive in 65 medal. you talk to anybody who's a vietnam veteran and say did you have one of those, I was alive in 65 medals. They, they're going to know instantly what she's talking about. But now we've got the, I was alive in 95. I was alive in 96. I was alive in 97. I was alive in 98. And you got a medal for every one of them. That's how. Yeah. Uh, let me get more in the country. <laughs> uh, let me, let me give you a number and tell you everything you need to know. Okay. 9-11 took place. There were nine four-star admirals and generals. There are now 41. How many? 41. <laughs> when 9-11 took place, there were not, not, not I'm sorry, not 9-11. During World War II, there were three ships per admiral. Now there are three admirals per ship. And you wonder, okay, 
what exactly is the problem with our military. Have you ever played poker? Yeah. Okay. Of course. You, you got four or five people together and, yeah. and play poker. Okay. If you got five people and you're sitting playing poker and somebody says, hey, I got a great idea. We're running out of beer and we need some pizza. What do we want on our pizza? Now, whatever time it takes five people to decide what kind of toppings to put on a pizza, we're going to call that X. What happens if you add one more person? Instead of taking X, now it takes two X. Now, if you add two people, it takes four X, okay? So we've got this overloaded, cumbersome, I was alive in 95, geniuses running our military. The military procurement programs are totally, absolutely out of control. The military equipment that they're fighting with now is crap. Okay. Yeah. That's the right. That's the, it's it's going to be a very short war. Yeah. Well, on that note, um, my oldest daughter thinks you're handsome. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, can, can I be very direct? Please. Why do you wear glasses? So I can see you in the eyes. Okay. You need to take your daughter to an optometrist. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. Uh, so, Bob. If you appreciated me for my humor. That too. I would not that understand too. it. No, she'll listen to this whole thing. Um, so, what to look out for? Really, over the next week or several weeks, what I mean, your your ear is on the ground listening. Um, your eyes are watching. Okay, there, there's two things that could happen. Mm -hmm. One is the intelligence report is correct, and we start World War Three this weekend. And of course, the good news is, if he's incorrect, we don't start World War Three this weekend. But the bad news is, well, it'll be the week after, the week after, the week after, the week after. Vladimir Putin has said, do not cross this red line. Yep. We're going to cross the red line, and we are going to pay a massive price as a result. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. Man, this is really scary. Uh, it's actually a really good time for everybody to think about what is important in their life. I, I wish there were more people who were standing up and speaking out. Okay. Yeah. I wish Americans literally understood the, the effects of the catastrophic stupidity of the leaders of the country. We, we're about to pay a massive price for ignorance. Yep. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. Mm. Well, Bob, um, we'll end on that. Um, I, I would, I'm going to be in touch with you. And if, if this does happen, man, you're going to be the first person I call. Oh, won't, um, be any, won't be any phones. <laughs> I know. I'll still try. Um, uh, I, I've been in a war and I've seen how ugly it is and I've seen the stupidity and I've seen the lies and the deceit and I, I truly feel sorry for the people in Israel, I feel sorry for the people in Gaza, and I feel sorry for the people in Lebanon, I feel sorry for the people in Ukraine and Russia. War is evil. Nobody wins any war. The only thing that happens is one side loses a lot more than the rest. That's right. But should this happen, it's a good time to think about what's important to you in life. And if you understood 
your family, your home, your city. That's important. Okay, this idea that we need to control the rest of the rest of the world. We need to make the rules for them. That's bullshit. It's nonsense. We, we need to take all these uh, guys running Washington, send them to get them. Oh. Yeah. Good to agree more with you. All right. Well, Bob, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Um, thanks for the intel. I mean, I hope it's wrong, but thank you for the intelligence report. And I, um, I'm sure it's a good source of coming from you. Uh, I hope I'm wrong too. I know you do. I know you do. Uh, but yeah, just thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for sharing. And if this video doesn't get blacklisted, uh, it'll get a lot of views. So oh, I, 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 I'm so disappointed. They've gone after the head of Telegraph. They've gone after Elon Musk. E even Zuckerberg has come out and admitted yeah. that he bent over for the for the uh, Pentagon and for for the government. Okay, and allowed censorship. Yeah. And how come these guys get all the attention? I mean, I say some really outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> They haven't come after you yet. Uh. Yeah. Okay, I'm really disappointed. I mean, the yeah. FBI said, you know, we need to arrest Elon Musk. I thought, God. You know, yeah. What about what Bob? About me? <laughs> well, you know, I uh, I did a video with Andrew Yu, and we started, we were talking about similar things. Um, and that video that got censored. That got 200 views. And I was like, that's a 20,000 view video but it's just when you start talking about some geopolitical things and its situations yeah you just they'll just shut you down so but we're putting it out there i want as many people that can see it as they can so here we go bob that moriarty three two one gold thank you my friends i can't tell you how much i appreciate you thank you super deal thank you sir yep bye <laughs>